Hello and <coughs> mm, welcome to the frog. Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, it's a bit miserable out there. It's rainy and there's a fierce storm blowing in. It looks like the weather's going to be a bit rubbish for a few days. But it doesn't matter because there are always plenty of jobs to do undercover. So I'm in one of our larger greenhouses today and this is where we planted the grafted tomatoes. So I'm going to take a closer look at those. I'm going to take out excess side shoots and do a bit of tying in. Then there are these vines here. These are going a little bit mad. These all need to be tied in and probably thinned out a little bit. So I can take a look at those. And right at the end, I've got my apricot tree. This is one that's had a bit of a, a rough start to its life. It's been moved a couple of times and, and hacked back. Well, at the start of this year, I cut it right back hard to encourage some new and rather more useful growth to develop. And it's put on a ton of new branches. I think some of those are going to be reasonably well placed for, for tying in. And some of them need to be removed or, or cut back. So I can take a look at that as well. But first to the tomatoes. So I'm just looking at these. The graft union looks OK. These plants look pretty healthy, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with them so far. Now, I need to take out some side shoots and I need to tie these in. So I've got some snips here for any of the larger side shoots. So there's a large one here. I'll do less damage to the plant if I take those out with snips. I can take that off. So as always, we're getting the side shoots growing from the leaf axils, and I don't want any of those. I mean, typically for a cordon tomato, which you're growing in, in one stem, you need to take all of these side shoots off. Now, those lower leaves are looking a little bit straggly now, so I can take those off as well and whatever that is behind. Okay, so that's a little bit tidier. I'll nip that very small one out. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. So I've just got some jute twine here to tie these in. People use all sorts of different ties, but I know there are quicker methods, but I quite like doing it with the, the old garden twine. I'm leaving plenty of room here for these stems to expand as they grow. I don't know how big they're going to get this year. The grafting might have some effect on it, but I'll leave plenty of room there anyway. We've got the first truss forming. Well, actually, we've got our first tomato forming. So, yeah, these are looking reasonably good. The smaller side shoots snap off ever so easily, so I don't need the snips for those. I will take those lower leaves off. The, they're never going to be good for much. And I think one more tie here. That's all it needs for now. We could do with some warmer weather, really. It's, it is a bit miserable for the latter half of May. So this plant is slightly wonky looking. You can see that this split into two main stems. I've already cut that out, although I've, I seem to have done a, a poor job of that. Let me make a clean cut there. Um, so I've already cut the growing tip off of this. I've left the leaves on there for now. Um, and I've selected this one on the, the left to grow on. So I'll just take off the lower leaves and, and the side shoots again. 
Now this does happen quite a lot, especially with some of these older varieties. They seem very prone to dividing like this. So yeah, it's not a bad idea to keep an eye on that and, and just, well, you can, you can tie in two stems if you want, if you've got the space, if you've got plenty of distance between the plants and they're good vigorous stems, you could tie in both, but I only want one here. So um, I think I will leave it just like that for now. Very droopy, these leaves on this particular variety. This is Belmonte. It is a kind of droopy, sad looking sort, but I might cut the end of that off as well. I don't like them dragging on the ground. As soon as they're big enough to have the lower leaves removed, it, it's not a bad idea to do that. Keep them well clear of the soil. Well, looking at this apricot tree here, this is not the right way to go about this sort of training at all, but um, the side branches, you may just be able to make out under this foliage. They were cut back quite hard to encourage some better place growth. So now I'm looking for a branch to continue up the cane that I've already fixed in place. That one would do nicely there. And similarly, we've got a good one on this side. Then ideally, I'm looking for at least one branch to come out underneath. Now they do tend to be a little weaker and, and this one here is a, well it's in the right place but it's quite a weak shoot but I, I will leave that one and hope that that will provide the lower branch for me. And then I want one or two that I can take on, maybe just one at the moment and divide that later. Um, that's quite a well, that's quite a well placed branch. I could split those two pretty much like that. I'm not sure about this one. And there is this branch here that maybe could be used. This isn't a huge space, so I don't want to start with too much branching down the bottom. So, so it might just be one below and one above is enough. On this side, we've got a couple of better placed candidates for the lower branch. This one's quite nice. And so is that, so I might keep both of those. Um, there's plenty of growth up the top. Actually, I think maybe I'll just keep that one there. I'm going to take that off and that off because I don't need either of those. If I just keep that one there, then I can cut these back to just a, a few leaves. That'll be fine. So I'll, I'll just leave that one to grow on underneath. All of this growth is tending to come this way a bit because of the direction of the sunlight. So I will have to tie these down or I'm going to get some really weird shapes here. Um, that's quite a handy branch, as is that one. I think what I'll do is tie these in first just in case something goes slightly wrong. When they're tied in, I'll, I'll take out those that I don't need. So I think the first job is to put a couple more canes on to this mesh trellising. And then I can see exactly what to tie in. So I've got some of my usual rubbery plant tie here. I like this for tying in fruit trees. It's got a good amount of stretch to it. It's not going to cut into the stem and it's going to give quite a bit if I forget to loosen the ties as the stems grow. Even so, I'm going to leave that plenty loose. So 
So that will do for that one. This one doesn't need anything. It can just hang out there. And this one is perfectly placed for this cane. I think just one tie will do there. Now what? That's the question. I've got one more branch here. But if I were to utilize this one, it would be heading off quite vertically. And vertical growth is what I want to avoid here, if at all possible. The vertical growth is going to be far more vigorous than laying these stems down. So I think I would be just as well off maybe taking some side shoots off of this branch later on to fill in the rest of this space rather than taking one up from so low down. I can, I can take another one off of here later on. So I'm just going to cut that one back. And I think I'm going to do the same here, actually. I'm going to keep just a pair of branches going up there. So then these, these can be cut back. And then I'm really hoping that this one develops a little bit more growth than that. He's a bit sad there, but maybe having cut this other competing growth out, this sad little fellow will grow on. It's never going to be that vigorous, not, not heading down there, but let's see how it does. Those two can tie in quite happily to these canes now. So this doesn't look too bad now. I think these two branches on each side are going to be a pretty good start to the, the fan here. I will leave these short pieces. They're not causing any trouble. Um, and later on I will take away some shoots off of these to start filling in this space a little bit more. So in this greenhouse we've got a black Hamburg vine. And it's always pretty vigorous and it starts into growth under cover quite early in the year. So I really should have been tying this up um, a few weeks ago, but I've been so busy with potting on and planting out that I haven't got round to it. So now I've got to sort out this growth here. Now I may well have to thin out some of these. I will certainly have to thin some bunches later but I want to sort of untangle these and take just a few of these new branches. Um, you have to be rather careful with them. The branches themselves, they're not too weak, but the junction between this new growth and the old, it's surprisingly fragile. It's very easy to snap these entire branches off and I, I don't really want to do that. I know I've got an excess but I would rather pick the ones I want to keep rather than accidentally lose a few. So I've got this reinforcing mesh up on the roof here so I've got something I can tie these into. Some of this growth is really badly placed so um, I'm just going to take some of this out entirely. And the rest I just want to sort of tie up. I mean, this is, this is a really nice branch. So if I, if I cut a suitable length of string, I can tie that one straight up. Um, yeah. That will do for now. This branch here is rather well placed. I will just tie that up. Quite loosely. I don't want to put too much stress on these, these branches. We've got a load of nonsense back there. This is this is weak and poorly placed stuff, so I'll just nip those out. I know they've got fruit on but we've got more fruit than we need on this vine. 
or at least more fruit than can properly develop. That is also a rather poor shoot compared with this one and, and its neighbour. So I'll tie this one up first, and when that's in place, I'll nip that out. Well, this spur is poorly placed. You've got these two branches here, which are ideal. Um, I could just let this hang down and, and just cut this back here, like that. Um, actually, I don't need both bunches of grapes, so I could actually cut that back there. And, I mean, that would be okay. It's not going to cause any trouble there. Got this silly shoot at the back. I'll nip the end of that off. Um, I don't know. I'll think about that. I don't want it shading the, the peaches, really. Ah. No, I'm going to cut it out. Um, I'll keep those leaves. I'll cut it back to there. That's fine. There's plenty of, plenty of fruit here. This reinforcing mesh is a, is a recent addition to the greenhouses and uh, if I'd had this originally these vines would probably be in uh, slightly better order but in the past they were just tied back here and the, and the grapes would, would simply hang down but of course they get in the way of the peaches so I do, I do want to use this to, to get, the, get the grapes out of the way. It's just that not all of these spurs are perfectly placed for this purpose now. I'm sure they'll develop in due course with continued pruning. So that will be all right. This one is hanging down. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't pull that back up. Um, what I will do is just nip off this growing point and that second bunch keep those out of the way and I'll leave this on here for now these shoots are rubbish I'm going to cut that off that's so weak it's not going to do anything and what have I got back there um, well, I'll leave those not that that's useless I'll leave this one for now and see what happens with it. It's a rather better place than this. I could take this out later, actually, and just keep this, this one. Some of these just need carefully teasing out where they're growing where I don't want them. So I'll just bend them very gently. And when I move these, I tend to hold the branch lower down so that I don't put too much strain here and then I should be able to just gently bend that under without it snapping off here. So that one is absolutely fine. I'll just put a little tie there. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But that can take some weight later on. Yeah. Um, that's a nice bunch, actually. It's not particularly well placed, but I think that will, that will be fine later. got this growth coming off of spurs on the vertical part of the trunk. Now, I probably shouldn't allow any of these to grow, but I do tend to leave them. I've cut this one back or pinched it off earlier in the year and, and it's starting to regrow, so I'll just 
take that tip out. I don't want any more growth there than that. This one's plenty long enough. Ah. Now this happens from time to time. This is a branch that is putting on a lot of vigorous growth, but it's not carrying any fruit, and, and it won't do. When you get these, these are providing extension growth, but they're not, they're not productive, so I'm just going to cut that out, because that's never going to be of any use to me. It's very useful if you're trying to extend your vine somewhere, but I'm not trying to do that, and in fact, I might I'll cut that back even further because that leaf is in the way and that leaves more room for this one and this one is being productive so. yeah these bunches at the moment are all pointing out that they're so light but of course when they when the berries start to develop they will then hang down nicely So this one here is very well placed. This one is growing in the wrong direction. I don't need that. It's too much. I'll take that one out. Under here I've got something growing where it really shouldn't be. That can come out. Under here I've got one growing horizontally. That's of no use at all. I'll take that one out as well. I'd allowed that vine to get a little bit scruffy, but it's all kind of thinned out and tied in now. These branches are now well out of the way of the peaches, and that's the important point here. Undoubtedly, I will have to thin this further later in the year. Um, I don't want to do that at this stage. I want to see how these bunches develop, and then I can take the, the best looking and the best placed bunches and retain those and, and thin the others out. However, this one is a really vigorous vine, so it can actually sustain a fair amount of fruit. I, I don't know how much of this I'm going to remove. It might not be too much. Um, here, for example, we've got two nice looking bunches and then a, a tiny bunch. Undoubtedly, I will remove that bunch. Similarly here, I will probably remove this little one and, and keep one or two of those but that's a job for later in the year as the berries start to develop when I've seen just how those bunches are looking I don't I don't want to prematurely thin those out and be left with some rubbish later on I know that some of the flower clusters were just starting to come out when we had some of the the really bad frost so there's there's potential on some of these bunches i mean there's one here that looks a bit ragged there's potential for some of these to be a little bit poor this year so i'll wait and see what happens and then later on still i will be thinning the individual berries on each bunch black hamburg responds really well to thinning if i don't thin them the the bunches will they'll be overcrowded and I'll never get full sized and full flavoured fruit. But if I can be bothered to go through what is really a rather laborious process and thin the individual bunches, then I'm going to get some full sized fruit and they're going to be so much better than an unthinned bunch. I did a little experiment last year. I left some unthinned and, and some thinned and there was just no comparison between the two, so that's a job for rather later in the year. So there's a selection of the pinching out, tying in and pruning jobs that I've got to keep up with undercover. And on a day like today where there's a gale brewing and it's wet and windy, it's not bad to have a nice little job indoors in the warm and dry. So anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now.